for the second time this year, it's finally time to be dishing out the compliments again as Jago and Lightfoot are finally back in Series 12 of the Infernal Investigators, taking on some more dark things in Victorian London. It's felt like an absolute decade since the last box set, partly because one, my life is pretty uneventful, and two, I really like Jago and Lightfoot, and this has just felt like the longest gap in absolutely ages, but boy, was it worth it. So as you all probably know, I absolutely adore Jago and Lightfoot. If anything, at the moment, it's probably better than Doctor Who, in my opinion. I absolutely adore it, and it's one of those things that I think is always at a high quality. All of the episodes that get pumped out are of a great standard. And first off, before I even start this review, if you're a Jago and Lightfoot fan and have an intention to buy this box set in the coming few months, or have an intention to buy it at some point, and sort of want it to be kept in mystery, then I wouldn't recommend watching this review, because it is going to be a spoiler review. There are going to be things in here that I'm going to be talking about, the different things that happen, and the different crime things. There's this is a crime drama so yeah if you want to sort of be kept guessing whilst listening to this box set i wouldn't recommend checking out this review For those people who are interested in the description below i will leave the link to go and buy this release on the big finish website it's out now it's currently 30 pounds at the pre-order price and then i do believe at the end of november it goes up to the 35 pound price tag it is a little bit more expensive to start with with other box set as opposed to like 20 pounds or something like that but it is worth it because as i say it is such a high quality but it is a little bit harder to get into from sort of different crowds if you've never actually seen Jago lightfoot before However, if you're looking for a starting place, I started with Series 10 and absolutely adored it and actually understood it. So yeah, maybe try with that one. But overall, for generally for this one as well, it seems to be okay. I think you could manage actually getting into this one without having the other backlog as well. So just as a little reminder, last time in Series 11, we had the Master, we had the Sixth Doctor, and we had a lot of things going on in Victorian London, and we actually kicked off at the very end of the story with the opening to Series 12, where Ellie goes off to this little gallery called the Scarlet Gallery, and basically kills the person who's protecting all the paintings because she's a vampire again, and that is where Series 11 ended, and that is where my life therefore ended, as I've needed to wait now in sort of stasis for about sort of four months, waiting to see how it's going to get resolved. But yeah, it wasn't the biggest of cliffhangers, like it wasn't anything compared to the Series Series 10 cliffhanger that literally had me just in shock for about months on end. But yeah, this one is something that definitely was very intriguing. And I know that I do believe that in Series 2, we have the Jago Lightfoot vampire theme once again. So if you are a fan of Jago Lightfoot from the past box sets, then you'll probably enjoy this one because I, because I do believe we do in fact revisit the Series 2 plot. As of any Jago Lightfoot series, as always, we have four new cases along with an overarching plot for this box set. And the majority, if not all, of the writers for this box set are in fact reoccurring ones that we've seen many times before. So we have Episode 1, picture this written by Justin Richards, episode 2 The Flicker Man written by Paul Morris and Simon Bernard, episode 3 The School of Blood written by Paul Morris and then we have the series finale On Blood once again written by Justin Richards. So yeah overall there isn't really as many writers for this box set than usual, I do believe last time we had about four writers I think but yeah this one we don't really have too many but overall the plot is a little bit more strict so I sort of understand why they've probably done that. So starting with episode one, picture this, written by Justin Richards. It's one of those ones I was very intrigued by, because going by the bio, it's something a little bit different. And it reminded me a little bit of the Day of the Doctor, in a way of having paintings and things like that. But yeah, it's a very interesting one to start the series on, because the thing with Jago and Lightfoot is you can either start the series where the last series kicked off, having full straight away, no gaps in between drama and things like that straight away. Or you can do what this one did and sort of had a slight fade in, just having a normal plot as usual, a little bit of a plot that's sort of a little bit more relaxed than the others leaving all of the plot stuff sort of to the rest of the series and all the high maintenance stuff but yeah this one tends to be a little bit more of a fade in which is nice to see and which is good because I do believe the last one sort of got straight into it as well so yeah it's nice to finally have a little bit more of a relaxed start to the series as well. Other good thing about the first two episodes of the series is normally they're the more adventurous ones for example as I say this time I have the idea of paintings and then the next one I'll come on to in a little bit we have sort of stuff about cameras and things like that it's something that once again doesn't really contribute much at all to the actual overall rocking plot of the series but it's nice to finally see something else in there and it's a little bit more relaxed trying something new that isn't related to the actual overarching plot which is nice the murdered body in a scarlet gallery and inspector quick wants to inform jago and lightfoot that this dead body is there but instead of taking it to the mortuary as normal and lightfoot to sort of do his autopsy instead inspector quick wants him to go to the location of the crime which sounds sort of quite normal and sort of procedure in victorian times that's of course something that didn't happen when somebody died they just wanted to get them gone straight away to the mortuary to find out what happens and all the things such as evidence and different things that could be left behind sort of weren't even thought about back then because they didn't have the technology that we do now but with this one they wanted to sort of see what exactly has happened to the body because this one had a lot more of a pale and flakier face and he looked a lot more dead than a dead person which I don't even think that's possible but either way he looked pretty knackered 
Early on in the series, it's very much established that we're going to have this idea of the vampire theme once again. And Jago Lightfoot gets straight onto it because we've encountered them before, of course. Yeah, we have a very early get-go of the plot and knowing exactly what's going on. A little bit of a change from last time because we had the overarching plot going on without Jago and Lightfoot knowing. But with this one, we tend to have the overarching crime thing going between Inspector Quick for all of the box set as well, which is nice. So generally, we have four separate stories or maybe three separate stories and then the overarching plot going through episode one, two and then finally we have the final and four so it's nice to have something a little bit different and a change in format there of course when Jago and Lightfoot do some investigating of the dead body they soon find out that things aren't all as it seems or just seems suspicious as it is having this dead body in the Scarlet Gallery so they go for a look around and they find out that the paintings aren't exactly normal when they go around the room they see that the eyes of the people in fact move and things like that it's a very specialist gallery that only certain people can go to and they're very intrigued by this but straight away they're sort of directed away because they find in somebody's sort of pocket drop down the back of a sofa a little calling card for an expert person so they go and try and find him to find out that he's also died in mysterious circumstances and we have the funeral and things like that but before the funeral takes place Lightfoot wants to do a bit of an autopsy on the body to see what's gone on so the corpse gets took to the Lightfoot mortuary so then he can do his investigations to find out that when he takes back the sheets when the boys come in to sort of transport the body it's instead replaced by a ton of old canvas it's all flicked away and we have tons of paint on there which straight away very intriguing it's once again something very interesting something very new that I don't think has been done before it's a very arty style of episode and I guess I sort of like that because I'm sort of an arty person but yeah after this Lightfoot goes off on his investigation back to the Scarlet Gallery and he gets into a little bit of trouble and the next time we see him is in the Red Tavern but he's acting a little bit flaky as the Jago straight away notices and when he gets hit by a cup of somebody having an argument sort of slashes the top of his forehead and when he starts bleeding the blood isn't exactly blood it doesn't smell like blood but instead it's sort of like a powdery paint or like a sort of oil pastel paint so straight away we get to sort of see that hang on he's not real at all is he so then they go to the scarlet gallery to sort of get the full reveal of what's in fact happened to these people and they've been literally soaked into the paintings which once again i don't think that's an original idea i'm pretty sure i've seen that in tv before where people have literally got trapped in paintings if anything it's something very similar to what big finish have even done in the past in doom coalition's red lady but yeah this one is something a little bit more different in there but still jiggle like foot have got their own twist on it and i really do like that it's a very dark concept to be honest of would you rather be shot in the real world and just die I or would you rather be trapped in a painting for the rest of eternity and alive and sort of still actual living to an extent but as I say still trapped in a painting but of course by the end everything's resolved and everybody succeeds as Lightfoot ends up getting out of the painting in the end when Jago and Inspector Quick go to investigate and at the very end of the story where we think that everything is all happy and jolly of course we remember that a painting in the gallery was in fact stolen and it wasn't any of the special ones as all of them sort of have a special power behind them as I previously mentioned with the eyes and things like that but the one that got stolen was in normal painting called death on the platform when we have two people shooting another person and that of course will come back at the very end of the series and that all will be revealed so yeah straight away from the get-go we have this overarching plot really establishing itself the next episode of the box set is the flicker men written by simon bernard and paul morris which are a reoccurring writing team for jago and lightfoot that always tend to do really well and once again the same applies here because this is probably one of my favorite episodes of the box set is it very much takes on once again a different direction of as in victorian times we had the establishing of film and things like that and the actual first film and cinematography I do believe you call it cinematography films where they're really short and basically a few seconds long but people went to go and see them and of course with Jago owning a theatre people decided to go to see these films instead of going to the theatre meaning that he was losing out on business so in this episode we get this idea of having this new technology in there coming into contact with aliens which is once again something very different I really did enjoy it so as I say, we get introduced to Jago having a bit of financial problems as people aren't going to see the theatre as much and we soon find out that there's this problem where people are getting the flickers at the very start of the story. This woman comes back from being late after going and seeing somebody. It turns out that she comes home to find that she's got these flickers where she has static all over her and then she initially dies and then just fades away and then this happens a few times and Jago like foot are notified of course because it is a little bit supernatural. They don't have a clue what's going on but when they go to interview people they find out that the boyfriend of the person that was seeing 
being the woman who died, in fact went to the cinematography at the fair and then they go there to find out that of course not all is as it seems as per usual. He goes a little bit hesitant to start with because he doesn't want to pay to go and see the thing that's in fact going to take him out of business. Of course it won't because Jago's theatre is brilliant, of course it is. But yeah, um, it's really interesting to see how he has um, sort of this relationship with the person that is doing the cinematography because it is hilarious to start with. An absolute brilliant balance between the serious acting and the serious plot and murder between with this one-liners of Jago and the brilliant sort of comedic values between Jago and Lightfoot as well as once again on top form. I think that Sam Bernard and Paul Morris are probably two of the best writers for Jago and Lightfoot, especially when it comes to the comedy of actors. As I said, this episode is probably one of my favourites of the box set because it incorporates something that actually happened at that time, the development of the camera and things like that, along with the main plot itself, which is something that I'll get onto in a little bit, but as well, at the very end of the story, which I'm going to get into something straight away just to get out there because I love the idea, and it's what actually happens at the end of the story. As I said, we have the Flicker Men, which are, of course, on the cover, and they're sort of like a humanoid shape, but instead they're static, and it looks sort of a little bit like the Foretold in a way. But what I love about them is the fact that they're not villains, and technically, in the actual aspect of the plot for this story, there isn't a villain. In fact, it's just a mistake, because the people of the Flicker Men aren't sort of seeking to actually hurt people. Instead, because they're from a different dimension, when they just come into contact with another human through touch or anything like that, they just sort of interact to lock and then sort of trouble happens and they end up all flickery just because they're from a different dimension and we can't really bond together in a way sort of between the human race and the flickerman. I think it's very nice because it is unintentional the way that they're doing because they just want to get back home and they don't really they can't speak or anything like that they're just this random sort of flickery shape and I really like that because once again we don't see that in Doctor Who or Jago Lightfoot as much or any other Doctor Who related drama where essentially the villains of the story are in fact the villains it's just a mistake. We also have something in this story called Hamley's House of Horrors, which you're going like foot go to, and of course, they get scared out of their mind, but luckily it was also recorded on one of the new cameras, and um, instead, what he wants to do is put it on, and so people can see it as two cowardly gentlemen in the theatre. And they are a little bit hesitant to start with about this happening, because they don't want to be embarrassed in front of everybody and things, especially Jago, because he's of course very self-important, isn't he? But yeah, by the very end of the story, and it also going into the next one, when we find out about the film, and then going to see it and things like that, we in fact found that once again, that something's gone on that is very unusual. It's totally established in the story as well that the Flicker Men are very much the idea of something that was a nightmare for children in the past and just sort of stories and things, which is something that Ellie came across when she was a child and she had this friend. So we go to see him and visit them, which was very nice to give Ellie some character development in there as well. But yeah, overall for that respect, it wasn't really something new because it is essentially the childhood nightmare style of idea. But generally overall, I really like the way that this was done because it was once again entertaining, something different. And then it may sound a little bit empty to this episode to an extent because there was something else going on as well, including the vampires, which is a plot that was once again reoccurring for episode one. It took a little bit more of a shape for episode two and basically you have somebody called the old one, which is this oldest vampire ever which Ellie wants to get back with after series two and wants to become a vampire and what she needs to do in order to get back with the vampire people is kill Jago and Lightfoot and of course that doesn't happen in the end obviously but yeah it's really nice to see how we have these different people and Ellie turning evil which Lisa Bauman who is of course a big Finnish producer I've met her she's really nice as well and also as an actor with Ellie and as well she is of course Bernie Summerfield as well and she is an absolutely phenomenal actor I absolutely adore Lisa Bauman I think she's just perfect for the role as well as Bernie Summerfield as well and everybody who likes Jago Lightfoot wants to see Ellie sort of become a little bit more of an important role and gradually over time she really has and it would be nice to see a little bit more of that in the future but yeah overall for this series she became a very important role because of course she wants to become the vampire she wants to kill them and Lisa Bauman as evil is just perfect either way because she is an absolute brilliant actor but yeah I think that throughout this story we have a few more characters introduced as well and more so that I'll get on to in the third story but yeah generally overall having the vampire theme in there as well. We have a few more deaths relating to the vampire thing which comes on into episode 3 as well but yeah generally overall for that it pads out the story nicely and it is a really good overarching theme. The next episode of the series is The School of Blood written by Paul Morris. Now I don't think that he's actually written by himself for quite a while so yeah it's quite interesting to see what he's going to do without Simon Bernard. But yeah this one reminds me very much of a human nature slash school reunion version of Jay Gorn Lightfoot in a way because it's very much a school based story as you can guess by the title. We go to a Victorian in girls school and Lightfoot becomes a teacher because of course he does and if you aren't appealed to this box at straight away just from hearing that I don't know what would but yeah Lightfoot becomes a teacher and of course things have been going down in this school and people have been dying people 
people have been vanishing, people have just been going off the planet completely, and the score's a little bit weird, but yeah, Lightfoot, of course, soon finds out that something's going on, he goes for the role, Jago also goes as well, but he doesn't get the role because he doesn't have any qualifications, because he's just, he's not the best, is he? But yeah, he gets in a little bit later, though, as a caretaker, so that was very amusing once again to see. I think that once again, with it being Paul Morris, he was really able to get a few more of those comedic factors in there as well. I have a few great moments throughout this story, but generally, overall, I would sort of sum it up as more as Lightfoot's story, I think, which is nice, because I think we had a Jago based story in the previous series in Jago and Son, so it's nice to finally see Lightfoot's sort of version of that in a way of having a very Lightfoot style of story. We have some perfect moments throughout this story, but I really do like the cast. I think that it was a perfect setting of going to a girls' school. I don't think that's ever happened for Jago and Lightfoot before, so it's really nice to sort of get out of a Victorian slum style of murder format. But yeah, once again, it was very grim. I'm just going to get into it straight away. Basically, you have a girl in the school who's a vampire, and she's hiding from the old one along with the rest of her family, which have sort of gone to different parts of England because they sort of wanted to go away from the vampire regime. But yeah, she's, um, she's a, a vampire that wants a different life. Once again, she's not a villain she doesn't really seek to actually hurt people but instead she takes the blood from her fellow pupils which does sound a little bit vicious but instead they're in fact doing that willingly because all of her friends know that she's a vampire and they want to help her because they don't like the idea of her going out and basically getting rats off the floor and taking their blood instead aren't they nice friends? But yeah, instead they actually organise a rotor and get blood from each other in order for her to have, and then they have sort of this little thing where they're trading away and sort of, yeah, it's a nice idea because she doesn't really mean any harm in a way, and you do sort of feel sorry for her. So in the story we have Mr. Revener, who's played by Ron and Viber. Now he was in the previous stories as well, but he has employment within this school, he is one of the teachers, and straight we have more of the plot kicking off here, and he is a very dramatic style of character, he's of course working with the old one as well. Of course Ellie's very surprised to see that he's working in the school so she automatically knows that something's going on but not all goes to plan and he doesn't in fact get the information that he wants by the very end leaving Ellie to go and get that information for herself and sort of get a little bit more respect from the old one by the very end of the story but yeah generally what I like for this one is it's something once again a little bit different you have a few more sort of aspects of blood in there and things like that it's a little bit more gory than normal but I really like the actual idea of it of having these vampires actually working together in order to survive in a civilised way and as I said I did sort of feel sorry for him and along with that as well having the school format and the head teacher basically being stressed out of her mind because everything's going wrong understandably because she wasn't really in on it she didn't know what was going on everybody else was just dying and along with that as well we have Jago being a caretaker which was absolutely brilliant once Jago ended up taking the drama classes because of course he would as he's sort of a drama impresario or a theatre impresario as he calls himself and then we have a few nice scenes where they go to the Red Tavern and um, they also go to the Regency Theatre as well and it is it is one of those plots that I just, I really enjoyed it. It was nice just to sit back and listen to. It's a really nice and smooth story and very enjoyable as well because it wasn't really as much to the plot. Instead, it was sort of just more of an enjoyable listen. Also, by the end of the story, uh, Mr. Ravenna decides to attach a school pupil to the clapper in the middle of the bell called Big Bessie in the school college. And yeah, basically, he's going to ring the bell and, of course, no prizes for guessing what's going to happen to the small girl trapped inside the clapper and she's going to get more of a headache, you know, which bit grim, but very effective at the same time. Just to finish off the story, you know, the vampire girl that we've been sympathising with for the whole of the story, and once again at the very end she got out of it alive. Well, Ellie seen to that, but at the very end of the story she decided to go break into the college and kill the small little vampire girl. You know, because that's nice, isn't it? And then finally we have the series finale, Warm Blood, by Justin Richards, which is where, of course, everything goes absolutely dramatic and we find out the main plot itself which is a major thing with Jago and Lightfoot we have sort of the first three stories of being actual plots in a different nature then the final is where it all gets stringed together see we can have these plots actually work and all come to an end and resolving nicely but yeah it's um, once again one of those ones I mean, it wasn't the best final I've listened to I think by far I've listened to a few better ones in the past that I've um, enjoyed a little bit more but that's in no means saying that this one's rubbish I absolutely loved it I think that it was very entertaining once again I loved the old one I think it would have been nice to maybe in fact see him a little bit more and maybe have a few more things behind of what he wanted to do and things like that but yeah of course we have Ellie turning against Jago and Lightfoot which was a very shocking scene I, I just loved it the way that um, once again Lisa Bauman acted I dare say that Lisa Bauman probably is my standout character for the whole of the series even more than Trevor Baxter and Christopher Benjamin I would say that she's up there as my favourite person I just absolutely adored it I think the thing with Jago and Lightfoot I think that Trevor Baxter of course Lightfoot Christopher Benjamin is Jago 
Conrad Asquith as, of course, Inspector Quick, and then we have Ellie as well in there, played by Lisa Barman. All of them are absolutely brilliant, and they all work so brilliantly together, and it's probably the strongest cast for any big Finnish drama. I just absolutely love them all together, and I think that the scene towards the end where they turn against each other, and uh, even have Ellie actually saying, just kill me, and things like that with the stick, because she's a vampire now, and then they couldn't come to terms with it and things. It was just, it was sort of, it was quite heartbreaking to an extent, but of course, I will spoil it and say they do all get out alive, thankfully. And I just love the ending of what happens. But yeah, I think that um, basically to get into the actual plot itself, the vampire wants Jago and Lightfoot dead, of course. They want them to be resolved because throughout the story that they're seeing, they can actually cause and be a threat towards the vampire people. And um, yeah, we have a few reveals and things and they find out at the very end of episode three as well, when they go to the theatre to go and watch Free Cowardly Gentlemen, that in fact, when they watch it, only and Jago and Lightfoot then, of course, Ellie was with them as well. But because she's a vampire, you couldn't see her in the reflection and that's when we found out that hang on something's going on so we constantly have this trust issue for episode four which was once again very uncomfortable to sit through and i think that it was acted so brilliantly we're through the story we're directed to this house that they all go to see from ellie helping them saying that she knows where they are of course because she's working with them and we got into the building to find a shrine with a painting in the middle which was of course the one stolen from the scarlet gallery at the very start of the series and it's one of the ones that isn't really much of a significance it's not very important however we find out that I do believe early on in the series but we find out properly in this one where we have I don't actually know if it happened in Jago and Lightfoot itself maybe series 2 but we have um, Jago and Lightfoot shooting a person and actually sort of killing them in cold blood and it is a very once again a very uncomfortable scene to actually sit through because the soldier that was shot was in fact Ellie's brother and yeah it is it's very uncomfortable once again a very character based piece and I really enjoyed it from what they could do because it was a very powerful piece of writing parts of the plot but I am going to keep absent from this review for you to go and find out if you are in fact interested because it doesn't really need saying in this review but yeah generally overall the plot is very strong for this series I think that is probably one of the more tightest plots that I've actually listened to for Jago Lightfoot it's a lot more strict and the overarching theme is a lot more strict throughout the whole of the series and we have much more of a running story going all the way through even though we have that with series 11 this one is sort of more strict to an extent of having the same characters reoccurring at certain points as well but yeah I think that definitely these past two have had that strict format Maybe for the next one it will be nice to see a little bit more of that theme sort of being a little bit more relaxed and having a few more standalone stories in there. But generally overall of the stories are standalone anyway. It's just having that final one where everything's wrapped up. So the format does work well. It would be nice to see a little bit something different in there as well. My only criticism for the series finale really is we could have seen a little bit more of the old one. So that's my only thing that I think that I could say could have been improved on because it is something that would have been nice to see because he is a great actor who plays him. So yeah, it would have been nice to see that. But yeah, overall generally it's still a really enjoyable release. And at the very end of the story of the cliffhanger once again which isn't much of a cliffhanger for this series as we have i do believe now had series 10 had a cliffhanger at the end series 11 had a cliffhanger at the end so at the end of this one it's funny i to sort of cap it off for the past sort of three series now of jay gone like but see yeah, funny enough when i first started with series 10 but yeah it's nice to have sort of a bit of a cap off ending while we have um ellie in fact needing a blood transfusion so yeah and jay needs to um lightfoot needs to donate a bit of his blood to her so they are all a little bit shattered and then by the end i can just sort of imagine the at Lightfoot's house and uh, they're all looking out the window at the nice sun rising that Ellie can now look out because she's not a vampire anymore but yeah it's all a very nice sort of ending and all happy and jolly with them all being back together again the squad back together Jago, Lightfoot and Ellie but yeah I'm just really looking forward to what the next box set in fact has so speaking of the future of Jago and Lightfoot we do have confirmation now that Jago and Lightfoot series 13 will be released in April 2017 which is too long away for me to cope but yeah we have four more stories and they're just the value that they've got on the big Finnish website so it's very intriguing so I can't wait for that but luckily it's not a big of wait as last time because we also have more Jay Gore Lightfoot coming out in the fourth Doctor line of adventures it in fact returns in January 2017 so not too long of a wait that's only like two or so months away but yeah we have the Beast of Kravenos it's something to keep our Jay Gore Lightfoot fans going and the gap isn't as long between series 13 as well so yeah very excited for that one so yeah overall this box set I found it really enjoyable I think that it's a really good release we have a lot of character development in there and it is generally a very character based series if you're a Jago Lightfoot fan you'll no doubt love this box set as well if you want to get into Jago Lightfoot I think you could possibly do it just be aware that there is a little bit of backlog of the previous series as well I do believe the series too but generally overall I still think you could sort of cope it is a little bit more on the expensive side as well however but I will leave that in the description below as I said at the start of the review if you are in fact interested but other than that maybe 
maybe go and see one of the previous releases, maybe one of the single ones that Jago Lightfoot and Strax, because I know that Jago Lightfoot is something, as I say, that a lot of people want to get into, but the price does put them off. But yeah, I highly recommend it. It's, it's the best big finish line, in my opinion. I absolutely adore it. And just, just treat yourself to it, maybe for Christmas or something, because I absolutely love it. But So thanks for watching this review. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like, and please subscribe if you're not already. If any questions, please do leave them below, and I'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching, I shall see you all next time. So thanks for watching and bye for now.